Hi, this is the Marshall MG100 HFX, part of the brand new Marshall MG range. The, uh, the MG100 head is a two channel head with four different sounds in there, built in digital effects, and also you can program this amp up to customize for your liking. I'm gonna take you through everything uh, to show you how this amp works. Obviously it's a head, so we're running it through a Marshall MG412, also part of the, uh, the MG range. This is a four by 12 cabinet. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, take a look across the front panel and then we're going to check out some of the sounds then I'm going to show you how the effects work and how you control them and finally towards the end of this demo I'm going to show you how you can customize this amp for yourself. Going from left to right just looking at the dials to begin with. First you've got your gain control followed by your EQ section consisting of bass, middle and treble. Then you've got your reverb control just after that for the built-in reverb. Then you've got the volume for the channels. After that, you've got your modulation effects consisting of three different effects. After that, you've got your delay control for the built-in delay. And then you've got your master volume at the end there. Just after that, you've got your headphone uh, output, which also works as a line out too. So whether you want to use uh, headphones for, for practicing and not want to make too much noise, or you want to take a line out for recording or live stuff, then you use this, uh, this output just here. All right, so now we're going to go across the buttons along the top. Firstly, you've got your channel selection button for your clean channel, which consists of two different sounds, clean and crunch. When it's green as it is now, you're on your clean sound. If you press that button again, it changes to red, and you're now on your crunch sound. Press it one more time, and you're back to clean. Onto the overdrive. Again, you've got two different selections. Firstly, when you switch it over, it comes on as green, and then that's overdrive one. If you press it again, it's red, which is overdrive two. Press it again, it obviously takes you back to overdrive one, so you can toggle between them as well. The next button along here is your reverb on and off. You press this to turn your reverb on. The light comes on to show you that the reverb's on. Press it again, it turns off. Then down here, you've got your uh, modulation and delay uh, effects button on and off, which is just controlled just here. Then you've got your tap tempo button for your delay so you can tap in uh, whichever speed you want your delay to come in, which is something I'll show you in a little while. You've got your external effects next up. If you're running effects through the effects loop of this amp, then uh, they're controlled from here and this button will come on to bring those effects on and off. At the end, you've got your damping switch. I'll explain what damping does. I'm going to turn that on now to, uh, to sort of fatten up the sound. I'll explain in more detail in a little while. And finally, at the end, the store button for when you're starting to program this amp up for yourself. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in this amp. It is very easy to use for, for, uh, for the amount that you can do with it, though. So starting to look at some sounds now. Firstly, I've set the EQs up uh, as the following. Bass is on two thirds, uh, middle is on just under three quarters, and the same with the treble. I'm not using any of the effects for the time being. This is just the straight sounds that we're going to go through. So on the neck pickup of the guitar, this is the clean sound. So leaving everything where it is, uh, still with the gain on half and the uh, bass, middle and treble in, this, in the same positions, I'm just going to switch over to the crunch sound now. This is on the back pickup of the guitar and it's uh, reminiscent of a good old Marshall crunch. Alright, so those sounds that you've heard so far have all been just from the clean channel, from the one channel. Now we're going to move over to the main overdrive channel. As I said earlier, firstly, you've got your uh, green indicates that we're on overdrive one, which is more traditional Marshall, but higher gain, and uh, sort of retains all the clarity that you'd expect from a Marshall tone. And uh, again, with the EQs exactly where they are, this is the sound that you get. Thank you. 
Moving on to Overdrive 2 now. This sounds a little bit more intense, and if you want sort of harder rhythms, perhaps hard rock or metal, then this is probably the sound that you're after. And uh, once again, EQ's exactly where they are. I haven't touched anything, but it changes the sound to this now. Right, so that's a look at the, uh, the four main sounds within this amp. What we're going to do now is take a look at the built-in effects. First up is the built-in digital reverb. As I said earlier, the reverb control is, uh, is just here. I'm going to bring this up to half and I'm going to turn it on with the reverb indicator button just there. It's telling me that the reverb's on. Back to the clean sound now. Added reverb on half and you get this kind of sound. What I'm going to do is bring the reverb all the way up so you can hear how much is in there. All right, I'm going to bring the reverb. Uh, in fact, I'm going to turn it off while we look at the other effects. So, on to the main modulation effects now. Now, within this one control pot just here, there's three different types of effect. First up, you've got chorus, then further around, you've got phaser, and finally, you've got flanger. Now, the way that each one works is when you get onto the uh, selected effect, the further around clockwise that you, uh, you move the dial, the more intense the effect will become, and I'm going to show you how that kind of works now. Firstly, turning the effects on with the effects button just here will we'll bring those effects in. And first up on the chorus, I'm just going to bring it on the, uh, the first part of the chorus line. It should give me this nice kind of subtle chorus with that clean sound that we were juicy, just using. What I'm going to do now is turn that round to the other end of the scale on the chorus. Obviously you can set it anywhere in between, but just to show you the two extremes, this is now the other end of the chorus, which will increase the rate and depth and be a little bit more intense with that sound. So you can hear everything sped up, and as I said, it's a lot more kind of, of an intense sound. Moving around now to the phaser, which is the next effect. I've set it on the, uh, the first part of the phaser line, which will give me quite a nice slow phasing sound. What I'm going to do now is move it around to the other extreme. Obviously, there's everywhere in between as well if you want to choose that, but just to show you uh, how it works, this is the phaser moving quite quickly now. The last effect on, your, on the modulation section just here is the flanger, so firstly starting with the, uh, it's not quite as intense as the phaser, but still kind of has that, that way of moving the sound around. Firstly, the flanger on the slowest part just here. You can hear the flanger's moving quite slowly, but if I turn it up to the other extreme now, you'll hear the flanger moving really quickly. All right.
Right, so that's a look at the modulation effects. Keeping the effects uh, button on now, I'm going to start bringing in the delay. Now, the delay control works as, a, uh, as an effects level for the delay, so it brings, sort of mixes in the, the amount of delay with the dry signal of the guitar there. I'm going to put the delay on half to begin with. And you may have seen the tap button has been flashing throughout the whole of this demo. That's because the way that you select the speed of your delay, basically you enter it manually as you want. So you can change the, uh, the, the speed of delay with different sounds as you go along. You can see it flashing there. If I tap uh, twice quite quickly, it'll start flashing quickly. If I tap twice quite slowly, it will slow down to that rate that I've just set it. So within that, you get this kind of sound. If I wanted to slow that delay down a little bit more, I just enter it manually. And what I'm going to do now is bring the delay, uh, the, the effect level of the delay up so you can hear it. So now there'll be more of it with the signal of the guitar. So if I just hit one, uh, one chord, you've got plenty of it there. All right, so that's a look at the uh, very brief outline of the built-in effects. Obviously, you can do more with them and you can control them as you want. What I'm going to do now quickly is uh, turn the effects off and talk to you about this thing called damping that I mentioned earlier. The damping button is just here. It's the second to last control. And uh, basically what it does is it fattens up the sound and gives it more presence. So I'm going to go back to Overdrive 1, the sound that we had on Overdrive 1. I'm going to turn the damping off and then play just so you can hear it. Now this is with the damping back on. I'm just going to play toggling it on and off. So it's one of those things that you can have as a personal preference. If you want that sort of boost in your sound, if you want that kind of sheen, then uh, perhaps you'd want to use the damping. But obviously it sounds great without too. It's just a, a little bit more of a variation on all those sounds within the amp. All right, so for everything you've been hearing so far, the amp has been set in manual mode. And I've known that, I've known that because uh, just here where the store button is, the reason that that light is on is to indicate to me that the amp is in manual mode. Now there's two different modes to this amp, manual mode that you've been watching so far and also preset mode where you can start to customize this amp uh, to your liking. So we're going to switch over to that mode now. It's quite simple to get over to there. Uh, on the MG100 you hold down the damping button for two seconds and you'll watch the store light will then go out and everything will change on the front panel of the amp. Alright so now we're on to preset mode on the amp. and. Uh, Basically what this means now is we can start setting it up and storing it to the, uh, to the amp and it will remember where everything is. Every single thing apart from the master volume and that includes all the EQs, the gains, the channel volume, which effect, how much effect, uh, whether you've got the damping on and off, every single thing it will remember where you set them. So just uh, for instance I'm going to start setting up some sounds. These perhaps won't be sounds that you'd want to use but just to show you in context how they work. I'm going to kind of set them up a little bit funny just to show you how, how it kind of works. For instance with the uh, with the clean sound I'm going to set up myself a, a clean sound. All I want on this clean sound is uh, I'm going to push the treble all the way up, keep the mids down to about two-thirds and what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the bass right off, and which you might think is a strange thing to do. But just so you'll be able to hear then in context when I start switching through the other sounds, how effective it is in terms of storing your EQs as well. All 
Right, so that's the sound. Obviously, it sounds quite empty because I haven't put any bass on there, but I'm going to put a bit of chorus on there so it will remember that I've got chorus on. And a bit of reverb as well. In fact, I'll put a load of reverb on there. All right, so the reverb's on and the, uh, the chorus is on as well. Quite simply, all I do to store that sound is press the store button at the end. And you'll notice that this, these channel lights that have been blinking throughout the whole demo will then become steady. When the light's steady on the indicator light, it's basically telling you that's your stored sound. If you move any of the values, it will start blinking, telling you that that sound has been changed to sort of keep you, you know, let you know what's happening. So just by simply pressing the store button just here, I've now got a steady green light. And I've got my sound stored. What I'm going to do now is switch over to the crunch sound. And what I'm going to do is set up a pretty dry crunch sound. I'm going to bring the bass right up, the middle all the way up, uh, knock the treble back to about two thirds, take off the effects. I don't want any effects going on. Bring the gain down to about a quarter. Alright, that's the sound that I want for my crunch, quite simply, press the store button, it's stored just here. On to overdrive one now, I'm going to set this up as a good, um, as a good kind of general Marshall uh, full gain sound. So, turning the gain up to full, bass up, three quarters, keep the middle up quite high, treble, two thirds. Just going to knock the bass down to about half. All right, and with that, I'm going to bring in some effects. This time, I want some delay on there. I'm going to turn the delay uh, level up to three quarters. I'm going to tap out myself a tempo. Yeah, that's all good to go. So I'm just going to hit the store button. Now that's all stored. Now what I'm going to do with the final sound with Overdrive 2 is I'm going to scoop out the mids, going to take the mids all the way down, bring the bass all the way up, keep the treble roughly where it is, keep the gain quite high on about three quarters. In fact, I'm going to bring the bass and treble all the way up just to show you. Uh, gain on three quarters and I'm going to bring in another effect which is going to be the, the uh, phaser. Which I'm going to set at quite a high speed. It's kind of a messed up sound, but you know, just to show you, I'm going to store that in by pressing the store button and that's done. Now we've set up our four different sounds. So all we do now is we just go back to each channel and each sound should be recorded. So back on the clean channel, this should be our clean sound with uh, lots of reverb and chorus and no bass, which it is. Switching straight over to the crunch, this should be our nice dry fat crunch, which it is. And then moving on to overdrive one, it should be uh, Overdrive 1 should be our general Marshall sound with, uh, with lots of gain and punchy and with the delay. Which it is, and finally our uh, kind of crazy metal sound that we made with the phaser on Overdrive 2. So there you go, it's as simple as that to start storing sounds up, but not only does that mean that you can set up sounds on, uh, on different um, values, and with the foot switch as well, which see our other demo for that, you can also set up a whole bunch of other sounds and control it from the foot switch itself. Even if you wanted one sound with different effects or boosting the level for solos and stuff like that, you can do it. The possibilities really are endless with this uh, brand new MG range, and it's very, very cool stuff. So that's it, that's the MG... Uh, 100 FX, what we're going to do now is take a quick look at the rear panel. On the rear panel of the MG 100 FX, firstly you've got your input for your foot switch, followed by your speaker outputs. 
then you've got your line in for your MP3 player or CD player so you can run backing tracks or your regular MP3 player into the amp and jam along with it out the speaker. Then you've got your effects loop return and send. For more information on this amp and others in the brand new Marshall MG range, please contact your local Marshall dealer.